Hello, good afternoon, Michael Wynn, Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. Welcome to the Digital Marketing Podcast and video where we talk about digital marketing strategies and tactics to help grow your business. Today we're gonna to talk about Pantone's color of the year and how color influences your marketing for 2020. You know, every year Pantone, the color experts, come out with their color of the year and designers from interior, exterior, um, you know, graphic designers, uh, packaging, manufacturers, everyone either laughs at them or really takes them seriously. But I think that Pantone's color for 2020 is something that we should pay attention to, even though the color itself might be a little bit boring or at least not something that, you know, is so exciting that we've never seen before. So Pantone's color of 2020 is classic blue. And the classic blue, as they say, represents a, a sense of calm, confidence, a connection. But I think as they illustrate in, in their reasoning as to why they really chose it, um, is because it symbolizes a desire for or to have a dependable and stable foundation as we cross into the new era, the 2020 era. We're going to go into 2021 and 2022 and all the way through the decade of the 2020. So uh, it, it symbolizes this idea of wanting to have a dependable and stable um, you know, transition. I mean, we can remember back, remember Y2K when everyone thought, oh my gosh, we're going to roll into from 1999 to the 2000s and, you know, all the computers were going to break and things were going to go crazy. I mean, this is the opposite of that. We really want to have a, a stable um, foundation. And, you know, I thought this would be a great way to sort of kick off how are you thinking about color and how will it impact your marketing uh, for 2020? So think about this. Let's start off with a couple of brands that their logos are blue and kind of maybe have you think about how you may think about their particular brand because this might impact some of the campaigns uh, that you launch in 2020. So, you know, we think of blue, we think, of course, of Facebook and Ford Motor Company and PayPal and Samsung, uh, American Express, Visa, Dell, Volkswagen, just to name a few. And I think that, you know, those typically th the blue as a color, you know, has represented, you know, values like trust and loyalty, uh, dependability, logic, serenity. Um, but on the flip side, there's a negative side to blue. And I think that, that you have to take that into consideration when you're thinking about, you know, mixing colors. So some people may, you know, see blue as cold or emotionless or unfriendly or unappetizing. So you have to think about that. And what is the personality of blue? I think a lot of, you know, articles that you'll see and one of the ones that I like to reference to uh, a lot talks about the personality of blue being loyal, respectful, and social. I think that's kind of an interesting take on blue. So what about some of the other colors? Let's, let's dive into these colors. What about red? So red... Um, Think about some of the brands that use red in their logo, like Coca-Cola, Netflix, ESPN, Kellogg's, Target, Pinterest. You know, and what emotions does red really trigger, like power and passion and energy and excitement? But then what about the negative side? I think some people could, could uh, connect with red for anger or danger, warning, you know, defiance, or even pain. And what would be the personality of red? Some might say bold, adventurous, energetic. I think it's interesting when you start to think about these colors and, and how things, you know, um, really communicate uh, beyond words, right? I mean, I'm thinking about red, like it's like fast cars and like, you know, sexy lingerie. I mean, it's racy, you know. Um, what about orange? You know, orange, you know, logos like Amazon, Harley Davidson, MasterCard, um, you know, Nickelodeon, TNT, 
uh, Firefox. I mean, just a, a few that in incorporate orange into their logo. And the, the emotions typically associated with orange like courage, confidence, warmth, innovation, friendliness, and energy, uh, I think is, is interesting. But on the negative side, um, frustration, immaturity, ignorance, ignorance, uh, sluggishness, you know, that could be how orange could be, um, you know, interpreted uh, from, from one, you know, person's point of view. Uh, what about a personality? Well, I think it's interesting to think of it as adventurous, competitive, uh, or maybe disaffected. I don't know. Um, what about yellow? Yellow, we've got lots of brands that use yellow, like Cat Manufacturing, McDonald's, Hertz, uh, Best Buy, Shell, uh, DHL, um, you know, the Yellow Pages, Bic. I mean, there's a lot of companies that um, use yellow in the logo, which Typically, again, emotions typically uh, are like optimism and warmth and happiness, creativity, intellect, extroversion, right? Extroverts. Um, but then the negative, the flip side of that would be um, irrationality or fear, caution, anxiety, frustration, cowardice, right? I mean, that's so weird to think about the flip side. That's why I think it's really important for you to think about colors and how it's going to impact your marketing creative in 2020. What about the personality of yellow? Independent, strategic, impulsive, right? I think it's really interesting when we think about, you know, yellow and how the, the positive emotions are often, you know, offset with these logistical challenges or contrasts, right? So what about green? Green is obviously another very popular color. When we think about brands like John Deere, Land Rover, Whole Foods, Publix, um, Starbucks, um, Xbox, Android, Animal Planet, you know, it's just a lot of really great companies. So, you know, typically emotions that are associated with green would be health and hope, freshness, nature, growth, prosperity, but then on the negative side, you think of boredom, stagnation, envy, um, you know, blandness. Um, so very interesting. And what about the personality of green? Open, friendly, and authentic. So then when we get into maybe some of the other secondary colors like purple, right? So we've got like Yahoo and FedEx and Sci-Fi, Taco Bell. Um, Cadbury, you know, um, a lot of a lot of brands use the purple as as well, which typically you know communicate the emotion of wisdom, wealth, spirituality, imagination, sophistication. But then on the flip side, uh, a little bit difference of reflection uh, or decadence, suppression, excess, moodiness. Um, I think that it's very interesting. Um, you know, that, that you have that contrast of positive and negative emotions associated with um, purple. What about magenta? I mean, we can't go without thinking about magenta or sort of the pink family, if you will, like T-Mobile and Barbie, um, you know, um, Cosmopolitan, Priceline, you know, some of those types of brands that uh, use magenta as one of their as their primary logo color, and in emotions like uh, imaginative, passionate, caring, creative, innovative, quirky. But on the flip side, outrageousness, rebelliousness, flippancy, impulsiveness. Again, I think it's very interesting when you look at the positive and negatives um, that are typically associated with magenta. And then lastly, I mean, you can't think about um, logos without even colors that aren't colors uh, or void of color like black, right? Like Nike, uh, MTV, um, you know, Accenture, L'Oreal, Ralph Lauren, Jack Daniels, you know, all very popular logos that are essentially seen as, as black, right? 
um, but communicate sophistication, security, power, elegance, authority, and substance, whereas the negative side can come across as, um, you know, oppression or coldness, menacing, heaviness, evil, even mourning. So again, the positive versus the negative is interesting. And what about the personality of the color black, right? Decisive, confident, uh, serious. And then lastly, sort of the combination uh, of white or silver, we think of you know brands like Lexus, Adidas, Apple, Sony, uh, Mini, Tesla, um, you know just uh, you know a few Cartier, uh, Prada, you know to think of those types of brands and especially you know the the white you know really communicating emotion of innocence and purity, cleanliness, simplistic, pristine. Whereas the negative connotation might be sterile or empty, um, plain, cautious, or even distant. But what about the personality of, of white and silver as a color? You know, you think of that as optimistic or independent or even innocent. I think when you put all of this together and you think about all the different colors and you think about, okay, Pantone chose 2020 to be the color classic blue to represent this you know, desire to be dependable and stable foundation as we move into the new era. What about your brand? What does your brand want to stand for in 2020? How might that, um, how might color impact how you give your website a refresh or how you give your social media profiles and avatars and cover art, you know, a different treatment in a color to really kick off the new year? Or maybe you've got a new digital ad campaign that you want to kick off. How might you incorporate some of these colors, but then understand there's positive associations with these colors, but there's also a negative, uh, you know, two sides of one coin, if you will, when it comes to color and how it impacts or influences your marketing for 2020. Guys, I'm so glad you tuned in today. I hope you'll tune into our next episode where we talk about digital marketing strategies and tactics to help you grow your business. My name is Michael Wynn. I am the Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. We'll catch you next time.